this is Sophia answer. In the previous lecture, we have studied about the concept of centripetal force and the concept of the gravitation. Today, we are going to start the concept of Kepler's free law of motion. Before we start the video, make sure that you are clicking the bell icon so that you subscribe the video. As a result, the future videos which I am going to upload can be easily assist to you. Okay? So, please do subscribe. See children, today we are going to see about the Kepler's free law of motion. But before starting Kepler's free law of motion, you need to study one basic concept. Now, what's the basic concept? The one basic is that, that basic is that you need to know about the concept of ellipse. What is ellipse? Okay? So, see children, how you can get the ellipse? So, we all are aware of the cone. Ice cream cone, you know? Yes, no, ice cream cone. So, when you cut the cone at an inclined angle, Okay, so when you are cutting the cone, so once you cut the cone, you get a shape and that shape is known as ellipse. So this is the shape of ellipse. Okay, now the importance of ellipse is that ellipse has two focal points. If you see a circle, okay, so circle is having just one focal point that is the center. But if you see an ellipse, ellipse has two focal points. See, this clearly you are able to see F1 and F2. Okay, so this is the ellipse. For example, ellipse, you, you know the egg, how the shape of the egg is there, okay, so shape of the egg is like the ellipse, watermelon is also like a ellipse, okay, so ellipse has two focal points, how many focal points ellipse has, ellipse has two focal points and one more important thing of ellipse is there, okay, this, the sum of the distances of these two focal points, okay, when you add the distance of these two focal points, the sum of the distances of two focal points, okay, from any point the distance of these both the focal points okay when you take the sum of the distance of two focal points from any point on the curve okay you get to know that all the distances are constant for example how what this sentence is this means that for example f1b okay f1 f1b plus f f2 F1B plus F2B is equal to F1A plus F2A is equal to F1C plus F2C. They all are constant. What they will be? They all will be constant. This is the important concept of ellipse. Okay. So what we have understood over here, we have understood over here that what is ellipse? So ellipse has a two focal points. The sum of the distances of the two focal point is always constant is always constant okay in this most important thing is that ellipse has two focal point now let's come back to our concept Kepler's three law of planetary motion okay so Kepler also has given the three laws of planetary motion now we will study one by one the first law of Kepler okay Kepler's first law Kepler's first law deals with that how does the planet revolves around the sun okay we all know that we always tell that that earth is revolving around the sun in a circular orbit okay in the previous lecture i also told you moon is revolving around the earth in a circular orbit but here we have to make correction okay the planets don't revolve around the sun in a circular orbit instead it revolves in an elliptical orbit which orbit children elliptical orbit planets don't revolve in a circular orbit planet do not revolve in circular orbit but planet revolve in a elliptical orbit okay this most important correction we have to focus over here planet revolve in which orbit elliptical orbit so kepler told first law of that only okay so what is kepler's first law kepler's first law tells us that the orbit of the planet okay see what kepler first law is telling the orbit of the planet okay is an ellipse what is orbit of the planet the orbit of the planet is an ellipse ellipse with the sun at one of the foci for example, if here is the planet, if here is the planet, so this planet will make an orbit in this manner. The orbit of the planet is, the orbit of the planet is ellipse. Now, ellipse is having two focal points. One is over here, one is over Now, there. Normally, I don't know, ellipse is having two focal points. For example, if here is the planet, okay, so two focal points are there. So, among this focal point, among one of the focal points, sun may be there. Sun may be over here or sun may be over here. So, here I have shown the diagram. Is that it? So, According to Kepler's first law, so what is Kepler's first law? Kepler's first law tells us that the orbit of the planet, okay, the orbit of the planet is 
ellipse. Okay, and sun is at one of the foci. And where is the sun? Sun is present at one of the foci. Sun may be here also, or sun may be here also, because ellipse has two focal points, so sun may come here also. So this is the first law of Kepler's. Okay, so Kepler's first law of planetary motion. Now let's proceed toward the second law. Second law is also quite simple. Second law tells us that the planet covers the distance. See, if planet is over here, planet will move here from here, it will move here from here, and it will make a complete revolution. So Kepler's second law tells us that that planet, the motion of the planet. Okay, when the planet moves, so moving planet covers equal distance in equal interval of time. Okay, for example, our Earth is there. So our Earth is moving from here again, coming back there. Okay, so Earth take 365 days. So and these days will always be the same. It will never increase, never decrease. That only Kepler told. So Kepler second law tells us that the the planet covers equal distance in equal interval of time. Now what is the perfect statement for Kepler second law? So Kepler second law tells us that the line joining the sun and the planet, the line joining the sun and the planet sweeps equal area. Okay, the line joining sun and the planet sweeps. Sweeps means to cover. The line joining the sun and the planet sweeps equal area in equal interval of time. In shortcut we can tell like the planet cover the equal distances in equal interval of time. Here you can also notice that if planet is moving from here to here, so if we calculate the complete area, okay, this area and this area will be the same. This area, this area, and this area are the same. All three areas are same, and therefore time required to cover them is also same. Are you getting children? Okay, so this is also Kepler's second law of planetary motion. Now let's proceed toward the third law of planetary motion. Now Kepler's third law is quite simple again. Okay, according to Kepler's third law, there is a relationship between, okay, there is a relationship between two things. Now which are the two things? The very first is that period of revolution, period of revolution of the planet and distance of the planet from the sun. Okay, third Kepler's law. Okay, Kepler's third law is very important. Okay, and this import this Kepler's third law is used by Newton also. So remember the Kepler's third law very perfectly. So Kepler's third law gives the relationship between the period of revolution of the planet means how much time the planet is taking to revolve. There is a relationship between the period of revolution of the planet and the distance of the planet from the sun. For example, if this is sun. And this is planet. So this planet is revolving around the sun. Okay. So what is how much time is taken by this planet? Okay. And what is the distance of the planet from the sun? Okay. This is the relation of third law. But what is actual third law tells? So third law tells us that the square of period of revolution. So we will consider period of revolution as t. Let period of revolution be considered as t. Okay. So period the square. Period of revolution. The square of period of revolution is directly proportional to the cube of mean distance. Let the distance be considered as r. Okay. So I told you that the period of revolution is directly proportional to distance of the planet from the sun. Period of revolution is directly proportional to distance of the planet from the sun. But how they are proportional? They are proportional in the ratio of t square n. R cube. Understood, children? T square and R cube. So here we have studied Kepler's third law also. Listen one more time. What is Kepler's third law? Kepler's third law gives us the relationship between the time period of the planet, okay, and the distance of the planet from the sun. And Kepler's third law is as follows: the square of period of revolution is directly proportional to the cube of uh, to the the square of period of revolution. 